What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. And today we've got some mixing tips for you guys. These are just little tips and tricks that I use that really helped get me better at mixing and I'm definitely not a professional at it, but all this stuff is stuff that I learned from my mentors and my teachers at school and just from people in the industry that really helped bring my mixing up to the next level. But before we get into it, I gotta get you guys to do a couple of things. Firstly, smash that subscribe button and give the video a like if you like this content. And next, let me know down in the comments what sort of stuff you guys wanna see next. And I'll make sure to get around to as many of those videos as possible. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first tip I wanna tell you guys about that I think is really, really important is actually organizing your tracks properly. Grouping and color coding your tracks can really help make the mixing process a lot easier. It helps make everything easier to find so you know where everything is and it just makes your projects a whole lot more organized. The more organized your projects are, the easier it will be to mix them. So as you can see here, I've got all my drums. They're all mostly consolidated, all in the same color, and I, I know exactly where all of my drums and all of my effects are. And then the same with all of my other channels. Before I start mixing, I always do this. Sometimes you get a bit lazy in the production process, but definitely before I start mixing, I bounce everything to audio. I color code it all the same. I put them all in their own groups so that I know exactly where everything is. So this might seem like a pretty useless sort of tip, but trust me, before I started doing this, my projects were a mess. And then when I got to the mixing stage, it was really, really hard for me to find everything. And I was just, it was, my workflow was just really bad and it would take me forever. Once I started color coding and grouping everything properly, my mixing process became so much quicker and so much easier to work my head around everything. So the next tip I wanna give you guys that I do a lot is EQing. And everybody does EQing, but there's a few little tips and tricks that you can use that really help bring stuff together and help create some space in your mix and help things that you wanna shine more actually come out and shine a lot. So this project I've got open here is my track Truly Me with Soiree. And there were a few parts in the song where I was really having trouble getting the vocals to come through. So you can see in that part there, once that synth starts coming up, I start losing the vocals a little bit but it was a whole lot worse than it was. One trick that really helped me bring those vocals forward more was the way, what I did with my EQ. What I do with my EQ, I obviously cut all the lows and cut some of that really harsh high end, but I've also done a, just a small boost in the clarity range of the vocals. So all I would do with this is sweep through this little headphone button clicked and you find the clarity range of this vocal and that's what you're gonna boost. So you can see the clarity range there is somewhere around three to four K. So we'll just give that a little boost on there. So the next thing I'll do is I'll come through on the synth channel and I'll actually do a little reduction in that clarity range of the vocal. So you can see here again, I've swept through and at around the th about three and a half K is where I've done a little reduction on that synth. Not so much that it changes the sound of the synth, but enough so it creates some space for that vocal to pop through a lot more. So you can see if I solo these channels and I turn the EQs off, this is what it sounds like. You see the vocals still get lost a bit. And then if I turn the EQs on. You can see it just makes a really small difference, but it really helps bring those vocals forward because you're creating some space in that frequency range. So the next tip I want to give you guys is actually just mixing your songs quiet. I make the mistake of producing my songs way too loud and that's not so much a problem in the production stage but once you get to the mixing stage if you're trying to mix with everything really really loud you're obviously going to be able to hear things better you're going to be able to hear all those little things come through more but once you turn it down quiet some of those sounds will get lost so if you actually mix your project at a quieter volume you'll be able to hear all those sounds and you'll be able to mix your track to a proper level to where whether your song's being played really quiet or really loud, all of your elements can be heard properly. 
This next trick I wanna show you really helps create some space in your mix and helps create some room for everything to breathe. And I use this trick a lot on my drums and my percussion and all that to really help push them out to the side a bit and make room for some more important elements. And it's a really simple trick just using a delay. So you can see here, all I've just got is a hi-hat. And as you can hear, that's sitting very center, but it doesn't need to be because it's not an essential element. It's just something that's really helping create some groove for the song. So all I would do with this, we put on a delay, we unlink them, turn every turn both things to time, feedback at zero, and then you dry and wet at 100%. We'll bring the left or the right down to one millisecond, and then we'll bring the opposite one up to somewhere between seven and 10 milliseconds. Just whatever sounds best. We've got this one at 10 milliseconds. So you can see with the delay off, it's sitting very centered. With the delay on, you can see it really helps push those, really helps push those hats out to the side, which help create some room in the rest of your song for your bass and your kick and all those more important elements. And this is just a really quick trick that I use just to help create that room and make sure everything's got its own space in the mix. And you can do this on drums, you can do this on anything that you don't want sitting dead center. The next tip I wanna share with you guys is reverb. Making use of reverb, not just for what you would usually re use reverb for, just to get that sound, but it can really help send things to the back of the mix, help create this feeling that that sound is further away. And that again will help create a lot of room in your mix and really help you create all that space and help fill up the whole track instead of just having everything dead center and all those, and all those sounds fighting each other. So you can see here with these little dubstep noises that I've got, I don't want them really in your face. All these sounds are for is just to help accent the bass and help fill up the track a little bit. So I don't need them right up the front of the mix. All they can do is just sit in the background but help create some variation. So as you can see, I've just got a reverb with the decay times only on one second. You could use a less decay time with that. they have got the dry and wet up to 66%. And all this is doing, it's not creating a big reverb sound or anything. It's just helping that sound sound like it's further away. So you can see with the reverb off, those sounds are very upfront and they're very in your face. But with the reverb on, there is still a little, a little bit of that reverb effect, but you can see it makes the sound sound like it's a lot further away and helps create some more of that room in your mix. The last thing I want to share with you guys is just, it's not really a tip, but it's just something that I've been taught over the past couple of years, is there is no one way to do mixing. If something works and it sounds good, just do it that way. Use your ears and it doesn't matter if somebody says, oh, you shouldn't have five compressors on this channel, which you probably wouldn't anyway, but if that has given you an effect that you like and you think sounds good, that doesn't matter. Use those five compressors or use 10 EQs or 20 OTTs or whatever it may be, no matter how excessive it may be, that is might create that sound that you want and might actually really help bring your mix together. Those examples were obviously very excessive and you probably wouldn't do those things, but what I'm trying to say is there is no one dead on way to do mixing. There are a few rules you should follow, like being able to create space using EQs. Cut the low end on stuff that doesn't need low end. Cut the high end on stuff like your subs that doesn't need high end. And that can really help bring your stuff together. But there's no one specific way to do mixing. Just do what you think sounds good. And if somebody else can tell you a way of doing that, that might be better and might make it sound better, try it out, see how you go. But don't just listen to just one person or one tip or anything that you've gotten and use that as your Bible. Do what you think sounds good and really use your ears and this will help get your mixing so much better. And another last little tip, get people in your studio to listen to your stuff because what I've found is when you have other people around you, your ears become more sensitive and you can actually pick out on stuff that you might not have heard before. 
and get feedback from people. Getting feedback from people and actually taking on constructive criticism will actually really help get your mixing better and will really help train your ears to hear what sounds good and what doesn't and what actually works for you. So I hope all these tips really helped you guys and you got some good information out of it. Like I said, I'm not a professional mixing engineer, but these are just some little tips that I've gotten from my mentors and I've learned over the years that really help bring my mixing up to the next level where it needed to be and just enough so that I can have a professional sounding song. But thank you so much guys. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, give the video a like, let me know down in the comments what sort of stuff you want to see next and let me know if there's any mixing tips that you guys know of that I may not have mentioned and I'll try to get around to some of those videos and I'll give some of those tips a try and I'll let you know how I go. But thank you so much guys and I will see you on the next one.